So I touched on a bit about two of the main technologies that are out there, fiber. Um, I, I know the fiber communications industry um, very, very well indeed. And, and although it provides almost infinite bandwidth, what we do know is that it is very capital in, intensive. It takes quite a long time to roll out and it's not always suitable in certain types of uh, terrain. Having said that, you know, RF in particular, E-band is what I'm relating to here. Um, the spectrum is reasonably well regulated. That has its own challenges as well. It can be affected by interference and also has challenges around scaling around energy efficiency. It's not to say that it can't be done, but today those are the realities. It is pretty uh, range limited in terms of the bandwidth that we want to try to achieve. So the question is, so what other, what other option is there? And there are others. And in particular, free space optical comms. I'm sharing with you this particular site, which gives you an idea as to how that could look. At the moment, I've added those on top of mobile phone towers, but they can be on buildings. They can be on many types of different uh, infrastructure that is out there, but this gives you some illustration as to what that might look like. In particular, our solution, we're targeting anything from 20 gigabits per second up to 1.2 terabits per second. So as you well know, you know, the optical domain, the spectrum is almost infinite. It isn't quite infinite, but almost. At the same time, it has its challenges. It's not without the fact that it doesn't have uh, impacts around atmospheric uh, uh, interference there. And in our case, what we're doing is we're coupling what we're doing today with FSO along with the latest RF technology. And that gives you the benefit of both, both in terms of bandwidth and also that in terms of link availability. The architecture of our system is pretty straightforward in the sense that we have an optical head, which is put on top of a particular infrastructure. But a lot of the optics that we do use are actually housed separately, either in a central office or at a location that is quite convenient for the particular operator. Again, what we do is we design and develop the actual optical equipment themselves. We're not the actual operator as such. But again, I think in terms of trying to expand broadband connectivity as well as high bandwidth, can FSO deliver that? Absolutely. The market segments that we're predominantly focusing on right now, mobile backhaul, broadband connectivity, and also private networks. This slide here gives you an example as to one of the field trials that we have today, and it shows the equipment actually on top of a particular mobile mast on top of a building. Um, that is actually underway right now. Um, what we do know is that we're able to demonstrate duplex, so that's uh, communication in both directions simultaneously uh, from anything from 10 gigabits per second upwards. Typical range for us, really the sweet spot for us is anything between two kilometers up to about five to six kilometers. And in this case, this is a 6.1 kilometer link. And um, what we found is that the performance that we get out of it is, is pretty impressive. Uh, when you look at the actual link length and the distance that we're trying to achieve here. Deployment wise, pretty rapid, I would say, compared to fiber or even some of the RF systems, um, we can get a system up and running within six hours and also upgrades by virtue of the actual architecture that we have. We've ensured to make sure that the system can be upgraded very, very quickly. So what we also did was we said, okay, that's all well and good, but what really is the ceiling? You know, where are the limitations, both in terms of our systems and what we're actually trying to achieve here with free space optical communications? We've actually demonstrated that using coherent technology that we can have bandwidth up to 3.2 terabits per second. And the limitation around that is actually more based around the equipment. And what I mean by the equipment is the optical head is capable of up to 3.2 terabits today. I would say where the challenges lie is once you start to get down to the silicon and then you're starting to interface within the network itself. That's where further development is definitely needed. But in terms of where we classify as the majority of the demand, anywhere between 10 gigabits per second, up to several hundred gigabits per second, that's more than capable, both with the optics and silicon that uh, is available today. We did do some uh, total cost of ownership and return on investment calculations. And what we did find is that although fiber per se was very much capital intensive and took quite a long time to deploy, I have to say in terms of bandwidth, that bandwidth is there, you know, and, and it's almost infinite as well. 
However, having said that, if you need to actually get systems up and running and provide high bandwidth connectivity links, the only other real competitor that you've got is actually either going to be eBand or other FSO providers. So what we did was we said, well, look, let's look at in terms of what the cost of ownership is, is for us compared to the other systems. It fares pretty favorably. And in our case, we're also going to be deploying a hybrid FSO system. So that's free spaced optical communications and RF uh, connectivity together. And that ensures that you've got that 99.99% uh, telecom grade link availability. So what does this all mean? Well, it basically means that free space optical communications, as far as we see it, and certainly the <laughs> feedback that we're getting right now is that that <clears throat> opportunity is there. You have the ability to supercharge your network, to deploy bandwidth where you need it cost effectively. So as far as we see it, there's no reason why FSO shouldn't be adopted widespread across terrestrial-based applications. That's it from me. <laughs>